we're first going to look at how the baton can influence dynamic and texture in the music. And for this, it's a good idea, first of all, to consider the angle that the baton sits at when you start the music. It's going to be easier to show you this from sideways on, first of all. So I'm going to take a basic beating pattern of four. If I start with the stick angled upwards from the elbow to the point of the stick, this implies a rather light texture. And there's going to be quite a lot of contact coming through the first finger to the point. This could also be quite articulated. If I flatten the arm slightly so that it's parallel with the floor, this immediately brings more contact with the sound. So the focus is still at the point, but one has an impression of more contact with the sound along the shaft of the stick. If I angle the stick downwards and turn the arm slightly in, this implies more substance to the sound. With this, it's important to notice that although the stick is pointing down, it still remains on a line with the arm. In other words, it's not looking like this. That becomes rather weak. As soon as it's in line with the arm, we get something quite strong to sustain the sound. For the music, we're going to use the theme from Elgar's Enigma Variations, and we'll just play the theme first of all. So let's just take that apart into the melody and the accompaniment. The accompaniment first, these are quite sustained chords. Elgar puts a line under each one. So we need to give the impression of that with the stick. On subito piano here, And you'll see how the angle of the body and the angle of the stick changes for that subito piano. Instead of the body and the stick being down and forward, the body comes back up and the stick lifts, so immediately it conveys that we need a different quality of sound to the players. Look at that once more. This is the bar before the subito pianissimo. Also, in that place, the sound is brought very much back into the upper arm. It's as almost as if the conductor is pulling away from the sound. Let's now take the theme on its own, which has some very detailed markings by Elgar. One. The character of the next four bars relies on tenutos on the fourth beat of each one. And the conductor achieves this by tightening the grip slightly on the stick and achieving more resistance as the fourth beat is pulled through. Also, at the end of these four bars, you'll hear the first entry of the double bass. And the angle of the body and the baton is going to change here.
The double base entry needs a quite different grip and body angle from the conductor. The body comes back and the weight comes back much more into the arm. Just listen to that note once more. So now we'll take it from the double bass entry to the end of the theme, where there's some very intense accents which need to be expressed with a full weight of the arm behind them. So the stick is going to point downwards with the weight of the arm behind it. How does the conductor affect tempo when the music's in motion? Well, at its most basic level, it means that the beat's a bit bigger when the music is slower, and it has to get smaller when the music gets faster. Also, as the music gets quicker, the conductor needs to relax, not tense up. And when the music slows down, the conductor needs to bring the energy back into the body, so the music is almost being pulled back, and there's a bit more tension in the grip and also in the upper arm. A very good illustration of this is the climax from the Elegy from Tchaikovsky's Serenade for Strings. Lastly, we're going to look at an accelerando. This is the end of the Miller's Dance from Three Cornered Hat by Manuel de Fire. Here, the beat speed gets so fast that it needs to disintegrate from two into one. <laughs> 